Hey there. Thanks for joining me today. I really hope you're having an amazing time at Ignite and enjoying all the sessions so far. My name is Ashwin Saminathan. I work at Ubico, and today I'll be telling you about something that we deeply care about, passwords, and most importantly, how to get rid of them. So let's set the premise. Generally, when you have to access any restricted data or you need to access a system, you have to authenticate yourself. You probably actually had to log in to actually watch my video today, right? And in the market right now, the most common method of authentication, unfortunately, is the use of a username and password combination. Passwords are interesting. To make them secured, you need to make them complex, you need to change them regularly, and you need to ascertain that you don't use the same password across different websites. Well, you can see where this is going. To make it really secured, we actually make it very complex. And by making it very complex, we incentivize the users to try to find ways to bypass that security that we have put in place. Actually, some users will just write down their password so that they can actually see where it is and remember it. So by making it that complex, we are actually defeating the purpose that password was supposed to give us as an edge of security. And on top of that, passwords are quite easy to crack they are also quite susceptible to phishing attacks. So that's kind of a problem. And on top of that, if you think about it, well, just the fact of resetting a password can actually put quite a lot of burden on the IT support budgets. So we get it, password sucks. Surely multi-factor authentication can solve this problem, right? Well, the truth is, Anything is better than using just the username and password, but unfortunately, multi-factor authentication, not all of them are created equal. A lot of the multi-factor authentication methods available in the market right now are highly susceptible to phishing attacks. It could be one-time passwords, it could be mobile push, it could be SMS codes or email codes. And that leaves you quite open to phishing attack and leave your account open to account takeover, which is pretty not bad, not good. So let me illustrate this. <clears throat> so as usual, a phishing attack will start by getting you to a fake website. You could be redirected there through a link in an email, an SMS, or a phone call. Nobody knows. There's so many methods to use it, right? So you get to that fake web page, and it has the exact look and feel that you would expect from your regular website. So you feel a sense of trust, and you start an authentication process. Now, as soon as you start putting in your username and password, the attacker intercepts it and simultaneously starts a login flow on the real website. So now, the real website having like traditional multi-factor authentication in place, it starts the MFA flow and you will get potentially a mobile push or an OTP or an SMS coming to you and you thinking that you're actually on the real site, you will act on that. Now, of course, when you act on that, they can send you maybe to a fake login page, which makes you feel like you have actually succeeded in your login. Or we can actually just tell you, well, your login has failed and you have to try it again. The problem here is while this is happening on your side, well, the attacker gets access to the real system and he can go in and change whatever he has to do on your account. So this is quite of a big of a problem. So clearly usernames and passwords do not work and traditional MFA seem to fall through as well. So what should we use? <clears throat> well, in our opinion, the answer to this is passwordless authentication. That is a form of authentication that doesn't require you, the user, to provide a password to log in. Generally, to make this stronger, we would try to combine a couple of the authentication factors, something you know, something you have, and something that you are. So one of the things which is important here to talk about is the difference between a PIN and a password. So people think that passwords and PIN are not very different because they're all made of alphanumeric characters. Well, the difference is a password usually gets sent to the service itself, whereas a PIN does not. A PIN is just used to authenticate yourself to the local device that you have, for instance, a YubiKey. Or you can actually think of credit cards. When you use them and you put a PIN code to ascertain who you are, this is used to unlock the credit card and not the service itself. 
Ubico Microsoft and a few other actors in the, in the industry have combined their efforts to come up with an authentication protocol which satisfied this need for strong passwordless authentication, FIDO2. FIDO2 offers you a passwordless logging experience which combines something you have, a YubiKey, something that you know, a PIN code, or something that you are, a fingerprint. The whole protocol is based on public key cryptography, which makes it very highly resistant to phishing attacks. The good news is passwordless authentication is available for users of Azure Active Directory. So what do you need to make it work? Well, you need Microsoft Azure Active Directory first of all. Any edition will work, even the one included in your M365 uh, subscription. You need a compatible web browser. The good news is most of the commonly used web browsers, if you go on their latest edition, they will be able to support a passwordless authentication flow. You definitely need a YubiKey, of course. And if you want to extend passwordless to opening your Windows login session, you should need at least Windows 10 built 1903. So let's see how to enable FIDO2 authentication in Azure AD. So the first thing that you have to do is to log in to portal.azure.com. Then you click on security. Then on authentication methods. Finally, you click on, on FIDO2 security key. Select yes and click save. And we're good to go on the next step. <clears throat> So the next step is to associate the YubiKey with your account. So the thing that you have to do is, first of all, to launch your favorite uh, compatible FIDO2 browser, navigate to myprofile.microsoft.com, log in with your username and password as you would usually do. You would probably need to input any additional code that is required from you. Just wait a little bit for the login process to be completed. Once you are in, you will click on Update Info under Security Info. Takes a little bit of time to, to work, but then you click on Add Method, select Security Key. And really at this point, it's just a matter of following the prompts on the screen. Put in your YubiKey, touch it when you're asked to do it, and obviously you will have to set up a pin that we have discussed a little bit earlier. So once this is done, you will be set to actually log in passwordlessly to your account the next time you want to access it. All right. So let's try to see how it works in real life when we're trying to access something using passwordless. As usual, use your favorite FIDO2 compatible web browser. Navigate to office.com, for instance. When the sign-in page comes in, uh, you can click on sign-in options and select security key. And again, it's quite simple. Just follow the on-screen prompts and put in your PIN code when it's required. And voila, you will be logged in quite easily and have access to all your web application that you wanted. All right, so as you have seen using FIDO2 passwordless authentication, can be set up and used with quite a little effort. So it's quite easy to set, put in place, and even users find it quite easy to use, right? So where should we use it in an enterprise? Well, really, passwordless authentication can be used in multiple scenarios. We can use it to secure privileged account. So that could be administrators or executive in your account who have access to very critical information. Um, we can also use it to protect access to shared workstation. For instance, if we're talking about first-line workers who have to share the same device, it's very easy for them to log in using a YubiKey with the passwordless mode. Obviously, we can also use a YubiKey with FIDO2 passwordless in mobile restricted environments. If we're talking about, for instance, a call center, right? Definitely, it can also be used for your office workers, just your regular office workers, or even for people working from home. As we know, these days, most people are actually working from home. We can also use the passwordless authentication to 
to secure authentication from third party contractors that might be working in our company right now. And last but not least, well, you have the possibility of implementing passwordless authentication for your end customers. So be it like bank customers or retail customers, this is possible to be done. So now that we have talked about passwordless, we do understand that moving to a completely passwordless world will take some time. And this is why when we created the YubiKey, we made it so that it can be the perfect bridge to passwordless. What I mean by that is that the same YubiKey that you have can be used with your existing environment on-premise with everything that you might be having inside your organization. Active Directory, for instance, Active Directory Certificate Services. But the same YubiKey can actually help you go towards the cloud and the passwordless future without having to change the authenticator. So that's usually when we get a question about hardware authenticators. How do we get it to all our users? Well, Yubico came out with two services, which we call UB Enterprise Services, UB Enterprise Subscription and UB Enterprise Delivery. What those two services can give you is the ability to get the keys in the hands of your users across the world in a predictable and hassle-free manner. So what next? Well, first of all, we would like to get some feedback. Tell us what you enjoyed about this session and what we can probably improve. Visit the Ubico website to learn more a little bit about what we're doing, the innovation we're driving, and what else is on the roadmap for us. You can also join our developer program to get access to passwordless integration resource. So if you want to add passwordless authentication to your own website, well, you can get the, I would say, starter kit to help you on this journey. But most importantly, try it out. Get, a, get in touch with us, and we will be able to help you on the passwordless journey together with Ubico. Thank you very much. <laughs>